for everybody to kind of find their way back. I am using copyright free music from Breaking Copyright page using their stream Sad Music. And I am back and I am opening up the file that I wrote a memorial to my friend Christine in. And we will start this again with actual sound this time, guys, because, you know, I'm not that big a loser. <laughs> So I'm going to wait just a few moments to uh, get everybody back. I really appreciate you guys being patient with my complete technical fail. Let's try this again. All right, I'm going to hydrate. I'm going to need to hydrate because I'm probably going to cry my eyes out. So an app I don't even use anymore stole my microphone and it took me a while to figure it out and get it back in so I'm back and I have something to read here I'm waiting for uh, if Alan is here please let me know because that is who I'm waiting for um, because I will not start this before Alan because this is Alan's mother that I'm talking about so as soon as Alan is here I will start he is aware that I am getting ready to start. But, uh, yeah, a week ago tomorrow, Alan's mother, Christine, died of COVID-19. And uh, she was fully vaccinated and boosted. But that doesn't help if your T-cells don't do their jobs because they don't exist. I'm going to text Alan, see if he's on. I'm on. Let's see. We'll wait for him and then we'll start as soon as he uh, pops in. So I'm waiting because uh, I am not going to do this without him. This is not my normal content. This is for all the people who have lost people that are being counted out because of COVID-19. And I am now facing two, people, two more people very close to me also positive for COVID-19, one of whom I can't talk about. Um, so, and both one of whom, the other of whom is also at high risk. Alan, are you here? I'm ready to start when you are. And there is a lot of cussing ahead, so if that's going to offend you, now's the time to kind of step out of the channel. Because I'm going to cuss. I'm going to cuss a lot. <laughs> because um, I start with grief, then I go to rage, then I go back to grief, then I write, and then I feel a little bit better. So as soon as Alan shows up, I will be happy to start. I let him know through text that I was starting, so hopefully in a second he will be here. I see that everybody's waiting for me. There you are. All right. Okay. The sad music is from um, Breaking Copyright. It is their sad music, no copyright playlists with all kinds of cool stuff on it that I can play on my stream. All right, here we go. Not everyone's death is hailed with anything as pithy as fuck all you anti-vax, fucking anti-vax fucks. Someone extremely near and dear to me who was severely immunocompromised just died because fuckers in a fucking nursing home couldn't bother to wear a fucking mask. That gets most of the fucks out of the way, guys. But Christine deserved to live another 20 years, and I'm going to give her the memorial she deserves because I can't give her that 20 years. 27 years ago, I went with my roommate to pick up her brother from work, and he moved from a friend's couch to our house. That friend that he moved from was Christine. When he was at the worst moment of her life, of his life, she gave him love and a place to heal and never asked anything of him but his friendship. That brother became my husband. We've been married 24 years. Christine was his best friend. 
Christine was a member of the PTA the whole time her son was in school, with a genius for finding obscure and cheap solutions for the money problems the PTA has always had. She was a member of TOPS, which is Take Off Pounds Sensibly, and for you guys who aren't in America, PTA is Parents Teacher Association, and did the same for them. She was raunchy and loud and always had time to be loving. She was much more kind than I will ever be. She collected friends from all walks of life. A former Missouri legislator was proud to call her friend, and so were many people who were down and out. She had a laugh that would fill a room and a kindness that was so deep it resonated in her bones. Her life was a study and life isn't fair. If life were fair, she would have lived in a mansion with a garden and pets and people hanging on her every word. But she wasn't fortunate enough to be handed that life. She spent her entire life in deep poverty, and it was never a poverty of the soul. And she returned riches to the world where she was handed ashes, and she will be mourned deeply. She has never been healthy, and her health story isn't mine to tell. But I can say that its roots run deep, and that she was in every way a survivor. About two years ago, she developed an infection of unknown origin and has spent the last two years in and out of hospitals with doctors heroically looking for the source of the infection and failing to the point that at least three times we thought it would be any second now. From June until November 2021, she was in a very good hospital in and out of the ICU and acute care in order to save her life from the infection that would ravage her and retreat over and over again her toes and most of her fingers had to be amputated so when the infection appeared to retreat enough to send her home she had to go to a nursing home instead while she learned to use her stumps and relearned to walk her special shoes were on order I've been told they arrived but her uh, wheelchair had not because she loves and trusts us, especially my husband, who has been her best friend for 30 years, she got vaccinated and boosted, and it wasn't enough. She was diagnosed with COVID-19 on Monday. She died on Wednesday, and I am fucking livid. Now I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to science the fuck out of this because I'm tired of being Cassandra and not being listened to. When the original strain came out, doctors all over the world were hailed as heroes and researchers worked their tails off to develop not one, not two, but half a dozen different viable vaccines all over the world in far less time than anyone expected. And then the bullshit started. It's too soon. They're dangerous. What are the side effects? Politicians stoked people's feels. Charlatans profited off of people's fears. And soon an entire amorphous movement began of people who flat refused to take the vaccine in the name of freedom. It's not freedom, fuckers. It's not freedom to blithely infect your neighbors and friends. It's not freedom to ignore that your actions have consequences that kill people. Valuable people. Like Christine. So I'm a social worker, not an immunologist or doctor, but because I don't do my own research and instead look for the best minds in the field and listen to them, I know that the following things, I know the following things about COVID-19 and vaccination. One, the U.S. could easily have achieved a 95% vaccination rate if anti-vax fuckers hadn't turned it into a foot political football. Two, that wouldn't have stopped the fact that in many parts of the world, only about 25% of the people have been given the opportunity to get vaccinated. And that means that COVID would still mutate. Three, because viruses mutate, we knew that new strains would evolve frequently and that they would evolve to be more contagious because more contagious viruses will swamp other versions out. Four, so because we knew this, we knew, and by we, I mean actual scientists and people who don't do their own research, but instead listen to a variety of experts, look for consensus, and do their best to follow advice in a consistently shifting pool of knowledge that vaccines would stop being as effective as they were originally. Sciency interlude about memory cells. 
The memory cells that are activated by a virus, a vaccine to protect you are called B cells and T cells. There are others, but that's all we need to know for this. B cells. The vaccine or an infection, but not as consistently, tells the B cells, see the script? Memorize it. I want you to repeat it exactly when you see the virus. The problem with Omicron and other variants is that the vaccine involved and the script needed to stop you from getting infected changed. So now your B cells are quoting Shakespeare when Omicron has moved on to Lin-Manuel Miranda. T cells. The T cells are the ones that attack the virus on site. And see, they were taught to hate theater, all of COVID, not just Shakespeare or Lynn Manuel. So they're like, hey, dude, sneaking in here on 1990s hip hop instead of medieval English, I see what you are, and you're going down. So most people who were vaccinated will now catch COVID because their B cells don't work as well because it's changed enough. But then their T cells will beat the living shit out of it and they'll be okay except immunocompromised people, including elderly people and too many children. Their T cells got the same message as everyone else's T cells, but they were too weak to do the job or they simply weren't there. And COVID rolls right over them because you see vaccines don't create memory cells, they use the ones that are there and teach them how to fight better. And Christine was a fighter, fuckers. She survived on determination alone for over a year. And her fucking T-cells gave it their all and they couldn't do it. And she died. And the world is a smaller, sadder place for her loss. And if y'all motherfuckers would get vaccinated and wear a mask and social distance, other people with tired T-cells or no T-cells would live. Children would live grandparents would live and best friends who write the earth when it's upside down would live all y'all anti-vaxxers and COVID-19 deniers it's going to be mostly y'all that die in this your natural immunity never learned to appreciate and then beat the shit out of theater and I know that's a terrible analogy and I'm leaving it there because it hurts on a visceral level and that's what I'm after so if your B cells are going to slide them a ticket in, some of them winking slyly because they've seen old COVID-19 before, and your T cells, the ones still there, are going to chill out in the sauna while COVID-19 tears down every system in your body, and you might survive. You'll probably survive, but not all of you will, and a third of you will be living with the damage for a very long time, and almost all of you will, like me, lose someone you love to COVID-19. I posted that first paragraph to Twitter less than 10 minutes after Christine died. I got this response as uh, somebody who goes by Prince of Wands quote tweeted it. Love everyone fiercely does not demand that we make ourselves victims of these willingly weaponized suicide bombers who will gladly die and take us with them as long as it owns the lives. Willingly weaponized suicide bombers what a beautiful phrase you're willing to die and that's your right but you have no right to take people with you i don't love anti-vax propaganda i do not allow it to be spread in any area that is mine and i will counter it when i can and have the energy to do so nowhere i exist will ever be a safe place for anti-vax propaganda I'm furious at the political leaders and quacks who are using anti-vax nonsense to stir up outrage and create major upheaval in my country. I'm frustrated and sad at the people who believe they're garbage. We live in a country right now in the United States where at least a third of the country has Stockholm syndromes, identifying with people who treat them worse than cattle. And I feel utterly helpless to do anything about it. COVID-19 is a painful, terrible death. I don't wish it on anyone. So please, fuckers, get vaccinated. Mask up. Social distance. Honor Christine's memory. She will never make history books, but she mattered. Please let her death be the one that woke you up and had you 
buying the KN95 masks and N95 masks and demanding safer situations in schools and prisons and grocery stores. Let her motivate you to stand up to the customer who refuses to wear their mask and take the time to gently, much more gently than I'm being here, convince a friend to get vaccinated. Let her loss motivate you to say, I'd love to go, but I'll just Zoom until Omicron passes and keep our hospitals functional. Let her death remind you to check on people that you love, that you know are in danger and make sure that they know how much you love them. Christine mattered. So too did the anonymous person you passed COVID to when you ignored a cough, went to work maskless, unvaccinated, and pissed off at the minor inconvenience of being told you were being selfish. Even your selfish ass matters. Do it for Christine. That's it, guys. That's what the anger poured out of me. That, that's... If you didn't understand that people were dying that did all the right things and they died because some people didn't, now you do. If you didn't understand that Christine was an amazing person that just, she has this gravelly voice and it sometimes sounds like she's growling, but she wasn't. She was laughing. She was so full of joy. She just accepted people, even when she didn't understand. She just accepted. What we need is thousands upon thousands of Christines and a whole lot less people who question everything. Because sometimes Christine was exactly what the world needed. She never understood me, but she got me. I don't know if you know what I mean by that. And I'm going to miss her terribly. And we can't have an in-person uh, memorial for her for months because most of her family is also pretty vulnerable, including Ellen. So we're all busy protecting them right now. And that's really all I have today, guys. If you guys want to talk about this, this is fine. But I don't really want to just kind of play games and pretend I'm not hurting right now because I am. I'm hurting a lot. And I want you to, I want to thank you for, uh, for showing up and listening to me for a minute. Thank you, Buns. It's been a rough week. I also, like I said, I have two people now that are also as close to me as Christine is who are living with the virus, one of whom is at as much risk as she was, and the other of whom is probably going to be fine, but I worry about it anyway. Plus over half my caseload. <laughs> over half the people I see for therapy are sick right now. Thank you, Alan. Alan, and thank you. You've made my life so much better in the years since I've known. I think I first met you when you were, if I'm doing the math right, about seven or eight. <laughs> so I've known you forever. And here you are, a grown man who took care of his mom until she didn't need it anymore. Now it's time to take care of you. Case, I don't tell you it enough. I love you. And I can't, I can't stay. I gotta go. I'm sorry. I gotta get myself calmed down before I see my clients. Thank you very much for hanging out with me. Bye.